Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Good evening. Welcome. Thanks for being here for our Ash Wednesday service. Whether you're here in person or whether you're here in person by live stream, God bless you. I anticipate that we have our friends abroad from Winchester. We have our friends from Chi Alpha in Blacksburg at Virginia Tech. Uh, we have our friends in, at least one friend in Detroit, Hi Sue, and to everybody else that's watching, it's good together. As we begin, let me offer you a word of instruction, but first let me offer you a word of introduction. Hannah, uh, Kevin's gonna move the camera so he can watch her. This is Hannah Doty. Say hi, Hannah. Hi, Hannah. Hannah is our youth intern. That's her relationship to us at Bon Air right now. Hannah is a junior at Randolph-Macon College in Ashland. She's a religious, ma a religious studies major. She thinks she uh, is moving towards a pastorate in the United Methodist Church. And we are so excited that she's here working with our youth program. She's with Allison and the kids. And she has brought her own cheering company tonight, so we're thankful. But <laughs> it's, thank you for being here. It's a weird way to introduce and our choir and Hannah from this side. And, and she's going to be helping us with our liturgy, and she's going to be doing the imposition of ashes with us and all of these, all of these things. Uh, her job is to serve and to learn. Your job is to serve and to teach and to learn from her. Uh, for all that she brings with us. She's a Bailey Scholar, which we'll talk about that as our relationship goes on, but uh, that's good. Thanks for being here, and we celebrate together. We're going to do Imposition of Ashes just a little bit differently than we've always done. As you know, we just came out of the masking protocol from COVID 48 hours ago, 48 hours ago. So with that, uh, we're going we're gonna to kneel at the communion rail and when it's time to do the imposition of the ashes, which is at the very end of the service, at the imposition of ashes, you may, you'll be invited to come up and kneel, and Hannah and I will go around and we'll mark your forehead with the sign of the cross with the ashes from Palm Sunday fronds, and we'll say, remember that you are dust, to dust you, will, you shall return. And you will be invited to stay and kneel as long as you want. Um, it'll take a moment or two for us to get to you perhaps, but then you can stay and pray or contemplate or whatever it is the Holy Spirit leads you to, and when you're ready to go, go back to your seat and do it that way. With that being said, understand that there'll be some coming and going. There'll be people moving. Uh, there is no go and leave kind of words sometimes that we use, but you just go when you're ready and you come when you're ready, and people will be, people will be moving. And there will be music in the background as well to connect us to the Holy Spirit in that way. So that's kind of what this will look like. It'll be sort of a practice for Sunday's communion service, which will have some of those same similarities. But that's a, a little piece of what we're going to do tonight. And may God bless you as with this Ash Wednesday service and the presence of God through this as we move in to keeping a holy Lent. On this day of Ash Wednesday, we are marked in the sign of the cross made with the ashes from the palm fronds of, that had been waved in celebration of Jesus' entry in Jerusalem. And the branches of celebration are now ashes of contemplation. We contemplate Christ's glory. We contemplate our sinful nature and therefore our mortality. By Jesus' resurrection, death does not defeat God. Jesus overpowers sin, and we celebrate our salvation by God's grace, which we access through faith. Practice your faith. As a sign of the cross is made on your forehead, remember the words, feel the words, know the words. Remember that you are dust, and to dust ye shall return. We remember in the story of Genesis at the creation story that we'll read in a moment that God created people from the dust of the ground, and we remember the word in Hebrew, dust and ashes are often interchangeably and go that way. Join me in our greeting as found printed in your order of worship if you would join us there. Why have we gathered in this place?
invite you to be seated. Grace and peace to you from God. Let us pray for grace to keep Lent faithfully. Almighty and merciful God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and contrite hearts so that when we turn to you and confess our sins, we may receive your full and perfect forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created, when the Lord God had made the earth and the heavens. Now no shrub had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth, and there was no one to work the ground. But streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man and he brought her to the man. The man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man.
The gospel lesson comes from Matthew's gospel, the sixth chapter, the first six verses, and then the 16th through the 21st. If you want to follow along, it's in the Pew Bible there. And that might be a good idea. Might be a good idea. As you hear the word of God from this text tonight, notice as it's read and as you read along that it's the Lord calling us to be genuine in our piety. Your piety is an act of devotion, it's worship, uh, there's not anything bad about it. It kind of gets a, the word gets, kind of gets a bad rap through part of the gospel lesson because Jesus is often coming at odds with the Pharisees and calling them pious, uh, but piety really means practicing your devotion. And the reason Jesus is upset with the Pharisees often is the same reason he's is that to which he is calling people to concern themselves through the text tonight is everything you do that you do to worship God come for the right reason be genuine in your heart be open in your relationship be loving in your mind and that's really what the season we call Lent is all about to be honest with God and to be honest with ourselves remember that in all of our glory and in all of our talent and all of our gifts, we really are dust. And to dust, we shall return. The Lord says, be careful not to practice your piety, your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray... Go into your room, close the door, and pray to the Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father, who is unseen, and your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will what? Will reward you. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God indeed. Almighty Lord, Almighty God, Almighty Creator and Sustainer of us all, let your Holy Spirit fall upon us as we are gathered here to hear your Word, to sing your praises, to hear from you, and to speak with you, and to practice our faith. Lord, let your spirit lead us that all that we do will be not only acceptable in thy sight, but will lift up the name of Jesus Christ and propel us into your future from this night forward in a word of love. In Jesus' name, amen. So Jesus said, be careful not to practice your righteousness, your piety in front of others to be seen by them. When you give to the needy, don't announce it to be honored by others when you pray. Don't stand around just to be seen by others. When you fast, don't look up, don't look somber just to show others. So here he's talking about these acts of piety, these acts of devotion, these acts of worship, of giving and praying and fasting. That's, you know, what Jesus was talking about. And these are all activities of righteousness. These are means of grace. A means of grace is a way that God's love, extravagant love, is shared or kind of pumped into you in a special way. And they're deeds of mercy, ways that we follow Christ and care for other people. And all of these are ways that we show love to God and to other people. And it's almost odd to think Jesus uses the word don't a half a dozen times here in this text, but he's not saying don't do these things. He's not talking about not to do them. He's talking about to have a genuine heart when you do do them. He's talking about the activity and coming at it with the right purpose. If you don't come at it with the right purpose, 
It's not been good at all. It's not worked. It's, it's been in such a way that we aren't genuine and we aren't genuine, we aren't real. He calls us, what was it? He was... Y'all got to hurry up because I got to go to bed. <laughs> Hypocrites. Hypocrites. And I love to break down the word in an old two-part way from the early Latin and call them hypocrites. Hypocrites. Because you've got that hypo word there, that major word there. We remember that a hypocrite is what? It's a person that wore a mask. It's an actor. Back in the days before film, back in the days before we were close up to the activity and we could actually hear people in a large crowd, back in the day of pre-Jesus day, people wore large masks. That was the way to show what they were carrying out. And all the activity, all the storytelling was behind the mask. And Jesus is reminding us here that a wrong intention serves as a mask. And when we stand behind a mask with wrong intentions, we're telling a story or a lie, as sometimes storytelling is called. We're not being true. We're not being authentic. And the Lord says it doesn't matter what you do so much as it matters how you do it. You need to come at this as a way of honoring God. You need to come at this as a way of showing your love. You need to come at this really thinking about whose you are and who God is. God is the creator of all that is. God is the one, the giver, that all has been given. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He is the Savior of the world. He is the Lord of all of creation. And when we recognize the grace that God has given to us and the many means of grace, including baptism and the sacrament of Holy Communion, when God, we recognize how God has given God's self to us and we realize how that grace changes us from being hypocrites, people behind the mask, sometimes even the mask of sin, we realize that we are new people living the new lives with God indeed. You know, like a mask that stands between the actor, the storyteller, and anybody, everybody else, we recognize that sin is like a mask between us and God. Sin is anything that stands between us and God, so anything at all, including wrong intentions, can be that sin, those things that stand between us and the Lord. We come tonight realizing that we have the sign of the cross, and then we bear that wherever we go between now and the time we get to where we're going, to get home. And that's for us as a witness. And we go as a, sign, as a way to show the world, as we go to remind ourselves, as we go to remind God that we remember that we are God's people. We are sheep of God's pasture. We are persons that have been saved by the love of God and we move into life of God, and the way we carry that out is to love others, is to love God completely, and also to love ourselves. So go into a holy lit. Go without anything between you and God. Go remembering who Christ is and how much he loves you, and spend 40 days thinking about how you are in comparison to God, not as to Christ, not as a way to beat yourself up, but it's a way to lift up the Lord and then see how he is calling you up to live closer to him. May you have a holy Lent. May the Lord bless you in all ways. Amen and amen.
Our Lenteny of Penitence is found printed in your bulletin. I would invite you to join me there. Dear friends in Christ, every year we celebrate Christ's death and resurrection. Lent is a time to prepare for this celebration. In order that our Lent may be a time of renewal and growth, we begin this season by remembering our need for repentance and the forgiveness of God proclaimed by Jesus Christ. I invite you, therefore, in the name of Christ, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, self-denial, and giving to those in need, and by reading and meditating on the Word of God. These moments of silence, let me invite you to call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of God. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault and thought, word and deed, by what we have done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with all of our heart and soul and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Lord, have mercy. We have been deaf to your call to serve. We have been unfaithful, proud, and hypocritical. Christ, have mercy. We have been self-centered and have taken advantage of others. Lord, have mercy. We have been envious of those more fortunate than ourselves. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We have loved worldly goods and comforts too much. We have been dishonest in daily life and work. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have neglected prayer and worship and have failed to commend the faith that is in us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We have been blind to human need and suffering and indifferent to injustice and cruelty. Lord, have mercy. We have thought uncharitably about others, and we have been prejudiced towards those who differ from us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We have wasted and polluted your creation and lacked concern for those who come after us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray silently to God together. Loving God, you create us from the dust of the earth. May these ashes be for us a sign of our penitence and our mortality and a reminder that only by the cross do we receive eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Together we say, Amen. The question, will you turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ? And if you will, say, I will. I will. Invite those who desire to come and to have the ashes of penitence marked upon their heads. Come at the leading of the Holy Spirit. Kneel, stand as you will. Stay as long as the Holy Spirit would lead you to that, and we will meet you at the prayer rail. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust 
you shall return. Remember that you were dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you were dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you were dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you were dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you were dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you were dust, and to dust you shall return.
Now through the cross of Christ, God have mercy on you, pardon you, and set you free. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. God strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Amen and amen.